Hello everyone. Today's episode of Film Seizure is off the record, on the QT, and very hush-hush. It is 1997's L.A. Confidential. Hello, Ad, Jeff, and Chuck. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. See, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also doing great. <laughs> good, good, good. Today, today's episode is uh, L.A. Confidential, based on the novel... 1990 novel, I believe, by James Elroy. Yeah, James Elroy. Um, it is a 1950s L.A. noir picture. Um, Jeff and I like L.A. stories quite a bit. I think we've established that before. Um, I, like, I like scuzzy New York City of the 70s and 80s, and I like L.A. of the 40s and 50s mm-hmm. where it looked great on the outside and just fucking awful on the inside yep yep it uh, it (laughs) lays its its um shiny exterior with a crusty corrupt underbelly yes and my god danny devito talking about that at the beginning of this movie Mm -hmm. Mm, perfect perfect Mm -hmm. it's paradise (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty good (laughs) this this is um my goodness this is a, a movie filled with great performances um with only one being nominated yeah and i kind of feel like the win was for the whole cast though i agree the win the win i think won in one of the maybe weaker categories um and wouldn't have even been have been my pick of the nominated um uh was best supporting actress i believe yeah wouldn't even been my pick um in fact, I might have even have picked two people over Kim Basinger in this category. Um, I certainly would have picked Julianne Moore in Boogie Nights, and I might have even picked Minnie Driver in Good Will Hunting over Kim Basinger, but Kim Basinger is still very good. Her role is just um, – uh, it's not as meaty as the other roles. She, but she, she does have an emotional heart to true. this. True. She she's does a, lot she's a little line. bit of the the moral center, right. if you will. Yeah, and she does make mo- the most of her scenes for sure. Yes. Um, and so I guess she maybe looks it's not the weakest good. category. I guess it's <laughs> actually a pretty strong category. If I would have picked two other performances, but but yeah, I mean, this was a movie that got kind of buried at the Academy Awards. Uh, yeah, rightfully so, in my opinion. Well, this is the year of... It was a tough year. Yeah. It was a really I mean, this strong is, year. Yep. This is Titanic's year. Um, so I guess I kind of teased a little bit last week that I had stuff to say here. And um, sadly, I think this is the movie that kind of gets forgotten. So the nominees that year were As Good As It Gets, which won both of the lead mm-hmm. Oscars. Yep. Uh, for Nicholson and Helen Hunt, deservingly, I think, in a lot of yeah. ways. And, I think I and can't it's James L. Brooks. Too much. I still wouldn't have necessarily picked Helen Hunt necessarily, but Nicholson is a pretty hell. Of, that's a hell of a good performance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, and Greg Kinnear was nominated too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. He was my favorite part of that movie almost. <laughs> um, and then uh, the full Monty which was kind of a independent critical darling, um, which is a, it's a very good movie. It, it really is. is. It um, is. It's a movie that most people, that would probably be the one that people say that one was nominated for best picture. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. But, but it's also a movie that I don't think people have forgotten because it's sort of like in the zeitgeist now. Well, mm-hmm. it's, and there was like a whole stage musical that has recently reprised its, well, its popularity. I would argue the Magic Mike wouldn't happen without it. For sure. Um, With the exception sure. of Titanic, this movie, at least in the theater I worked at at the time, had the most like late goers. Oh, yeah. Like there were lots of people coming in January to see this yeah. movie. Had, like, I went and saw it. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Yep. Titanic was still in the theaters for some crazy route. Like that thing was. In well, that, that played. That was, I felt like that was in theaters for like 18 months or something. It, 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 to the it summer played, it played to the, the summer. Year. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then Goodwill Hunting, which of course launched 
Matt Damon and Ben Affleck in the superstardom, LA Confidential, and then Titanic. Now, here's the thing about Titanic. Um, we can argue what the quality of Titanic is, but there's two things that you cannot escape. Titanic is one of the movies, much like Star Wars, much like Jaws, much like E.T. Not only was it a box office champ, but it also I, pretty much movies today are able to be made because Titanic was successful. It was a $200 million movie, the most expensive movie ever, and it paid off. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why it paid off goes back to pre-World War II days of it was a movie that was generated by the female audience. Yeah, I was going to say it, it, it was popular. It was successful because of a high school girls like my wife who saw it seven times in the theater. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I saw so many boxes of Kleenex go into this movie with yeah. the same girl, like multiple, <laughs> like I'm not joking, yeah. multiple times. And, you know, I mean, that's the way movie, the movie business really was before, uh, before the end of World War II. And um, the, there was a stark change in how, I mean, that's when, I mean, if you, it's, it's no, it's no surprise that noir came along after world war two and it started gearing movies toward men because women went back to the, you know, went, went back to the home. Uh, but even then, like, you know, there were musicals and there were all sorts of other movies that were uh, very much powered by women buying tickets at the, you know, and going off to the movies and Titanic kind of brought back kind of a classic old school Hollywood feel. Now, all of these things are very ironic because LA confidential has a lot of old school Hollywood ideas mm -hmm. and it is a noir movie, which is almost in direct opposition to Titanic. This is the anti Titanic. Well, I think the it's anti -titanic. also worth I mentioning yeah. that all of five of these pictures were ex very financially successful. Yes, they were. All five were. I mean, I just want to give these these box office, office returns. Obviously, we know Titanic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, most successful movie of all time when it came out. Um, but uh, as, as good as it gets, made $314 million on 50. That's really fucking good. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the Full Monty... <laughs> I mean, holy shit! Made two hundred and fifty-eight million dollars on three and a half million. Oof. That is insane. That's got to be up there. Like yeah, in, it's got to be. It's got to be like for for a rate of return, got to be one, it's of, way the, up one there. of the best yeah. ever. And and it propelled uh, Robert Carlyle into becoming a Bond villain two years later. <laughs> yep. And and not to be you know totally outdone, Goodwill Hunting made um, two hundred and twenty-six million on ten. I mean, holy shit! Right. I and bet a third LA, of that was like Robin Williams' paycheck. Sorry. And then, yeah, yeah. Right. and then, LA Confidential, um, no slouch at 126 million on a 35 million dollar budget. So yeah, they were all triple figure, yeah, um, movies. And you, will see, back, you won't see that anymore. You're not going to no. see even you know even with the expanded category, you're not going to see five best picture nominees well, all that made a shit ton of money like that. Well, not especially not with. Um, a third of them now being streaming. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, that's um, this I mean, year. I mean, and I talked about this a little bit when I talked about the Oscars in general was that um, this year's Oscar field. I mean, there's no wonder why this year's primary interest is what Will Smith did being watched on YouTube a billion times, probably by now. Right. Nobody tuned in because there was hardly a successful movie nominated for best picture. Nobody had anything to root for. Yeah. There was no people's choice and right. it, say what you will, as much as everybody liked all five of those movies, Titanic was the people's choice. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what too. I ruined the ending of that movie for so many people that walked into the theater. <laughs> oh God. And they oh, God. still went in. <laughs> Sorry, it's uh, bad, but I told everyone that went in there that you know, so you know the ship sinks. It's yeah. terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. You were telling dad jokes before you long before you were dad. Yeah, I was practicing. I was practicing. You're practicing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy. Um, oh boy. Um, oh. Yeah. So um, no, and you know, and th this movie, 
uh, one was nominated. You know, so LA Confidential was nominated for nine. Yeah, I mean, Titanic was nominated for what, twelve or thirteen, something 13, like that. I think I remember but... thirteen, one, eleven. Um, yeah. So yeah, Kim Basinger, Best Supporting Actress, and uh, Brian Helgeland won, uh, and Curtis Hanson won for uh, Best Adapted Screenplay. Which, of course, yeah. my two favorite movies of '97 were L.A. Confidential and Good Will Hunting. Yeah. And they won the two screenplay <laughs> nominations yeah. or wins, um, and the both supporting roles. So, yep, yep, um, yeah. So, I mean, this was, um, I would say, if Titanic didn't come out, or if LA Confidential came out, maybe in '98 instead, it probably would have won Best Picture. Uh, it was on a ton of critics' top ten list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as I was kind of saying offline, uh, when we do this, this is the 22nd movie we've done that was on Roger Ebert's top ten list. Yeah. Uh, with an asterisk next to 2008 because he actually picked 30 movies in 2008 because they were so varied and it was such a good year he couldn't pick ten. How about that for a little bit of trivia? That is some trivia. It was a very good year. And this is one of the first years – that I really started paying attention to the Academy Awards. Oh, 97? Like, yeah. Yeah, because this was, would have been, the, you know, this would have been my senior year of high school. This is when I started seeing, like, almost everything that came out in the theater. It was right before I started working at the video store. Um, as basically, like, this was, like, the peak year where I started going movie nuts. Well, this was the second year that I saw all five. 92 was the first one that I saw all five in the theater. Mm -hmm. This was the second year. And this is also coming off of 96, where Jerry Maguire was the only studio nominee. All the other ones were super small indie movies um, and were hardly seen. So, you know, this was a, this was a, 97 was a big year for Hollywood. Yep. I would imagine. And it continued. Um, you know, the following year was a pretty big year. Um, some controversy at the at the Academy Awards with like Shakespeare in Love winning over stuff like Saving Private Ryan. But um, yeah, but yeah, this is I I I've been pretty much every year since 1997. I've seen every or, or almost every nominated film. Yeah, yeah, yep. This is one year I did for sure because I worked at the theater. Um, and I watched all of them. Mm-hmm. I think at the time I was like pining for as good as it gets or the full Monty to win, but reappraisal maybe LA Confidential at this point. Well, yeah, I I was probably pining most for LA Confidential, but I knew I I knew what the vote was going to be. Well, yeah, everyone knew yeah. Titanic was going to crush right. everything. It was, it was just a juggernaut. Yeah. I mean, there, there was nothing, nothing more would have made me happier than if Elliot Smith had won the best song over that fucking Titanic song. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Um, which most people, either. yeah. And most people thought those were the, really the only two real contenders in the song category that year. But, um, but as it is, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> right. True story. But, I mean, half the voters probably never heard or just thought, oh, it's just the song that plays at the end of Goodwill Hunting <laughs> or whatever. So, so yeah. So minute. that's interesting. I, I didn't realize this, um, that there there were two different best original score. Yes. This was categories. back when they split comedy and drama and comedy. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. That was very short lived. It was stupid. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> dumb, actually. Um what they should bring back is one that they haven't done since the mid eighties is song score, which is the collection of songs. Used oh, in. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Cause that, th- that's the category that both the Beatles and Prince have won in. Yeah. So. That's, that's something you get, you see more in like the Grammys now. Yeah. 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 Yep. So anyway, yeah. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that when we talk about like the very best of the best that we've, you know, done or whatever that we've had on this show. Uh, This one is probably in the top tier. Oh, oh, certainly. I mean, this one is up there with, you know, Cuckoo's Nest and Chinatown and, um, you know, uh, 
Rocky and though, you know, of course, all of those also Academy yeah. Award nominees. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is definitely uh, top tier stuff. I mean, how many episodes have we done? This is episode 225. 225. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there you go. Even if this is top 10 stuff. Yeah, even if you put it in the top 20, it's still top tier. Yeah. Yeah, well, sure. Yeah, it, yeah it, I yeah. agree. Top 10, probably. Um, I mean, it's up there. I mean, there's there are at least three Nicholson movies we can name that are up there with Cuckoo's Nest, Chinatown, and Five Easy Pieces. And Chuck, you were there for all three of them, I believe. I was. Man, 97 also had um, Donnie Brasco, Wag the Dog. Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights, The Sweet Hair Hereafter. Man, that's a hell of a year. Yeah, it was a good year. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, oh, and Jackie Brown was that year too. Oh God, yeah, it was Amistad. Um, I mean, just just a little, you know, Spielberg picture, just like chilling. <laughs> yeah, just just <laughs> hanging out there with yeah. with a nobody nominated for it called Anthony Hopkins. Right. Who's that guy? <laughs> Who's that Play, guy? Playing somebody named John Quincy. Adams? Ad- 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 <laughs> Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> oh, it's, probably, it's probably about nothing consequential. Shit, Let's put man. it that way. <laughs> the Apostle, that was a good flick too with Robert Duvall. I saw a lot of movies this year. This was Peter Fonda's big return too with um, Ulysses, or Yuli's Gold. Yuli's Gold, yep. yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, this is this is pretty top tier stuff. And, and this, is, this is a movie that um, had a ton of a ton of critical favor behind two and for good reason this is a i think a very very tight script oh my goodness it's it's um it is <laughs> it's a very good script i mean and it never feels over scripted either right right like sometimes with with a noir picture like this you can you can kind of, it can kind of get talky. It can kind of get a little um, in love with itself, right? And it can kind of get a little bit over over melodramatic with the dialogue. This this doesn't fall into any of those traps. I would almost argue that this movie kind of hates itself a little bit because we have to kind of, because every single person of consequence in this movie has a lot of dirt on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, even the the even the 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 good guy, the good guy, the guy who's doing quote unquote, the right thing for quote unquote, the right reasons is a turd. Yeah. He's in love with himself. Yeah. Well, he's a politician too. He's, um, how many he's self, right, he's, self, he's self-righteous. Yeah. 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 I think we could argue about who the real good guy of this movie is, but yeah, I'm with you. Like he's set up, we're talking about Edmund Exley, right? Right. Yeah. He's definitely set up as the moral compass to start the movie. Right. And we find out it's not exactly true, but right. Yeah. 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 So let's uh, let let's run down the the characters real quick because this is a pretty packed movie. Yeah. But we have Russell Crowe who plays Bud White, and um, just the we 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 meet all of these people in the first 10 minutes of the movie too. Yeah. Tough guy uh, with a heart. But. Yeah. Well, he beats up people who beat up women. Yeah. yeah. Um, he goes a little overboard a couple of times, but that's okay. He beats up people who beats up women, which yeah, he's on the surface, a, it's a bit of a blunt hammer. Um, and he's an anti-hero. Yeah. Not, not, not super intellectual. Um, but, uh, but, but definitely has some demons. Yep. And and some trauma in his life. Yep. He's Dale though because he's smarter than he thinks he is. That's right. <laughs> right. That's Callback. right. But he has right. to. But but he has to be convinced by a woman that he uh-huh. is smarter than he thinks he is. Um, also Dale like. Find yes, every great exactly. man. <laughs> yep. Uh, then you have uh, Jack Vincennes, who's played by Kevin Spacey, who is kind of a burnout. Um, he is not really so much interested in being a cop anymore right. as much as he is being the technical consultant. On essentially dragnet, <laughs> he's, he's a star. He's yeah. a star, right? Yeah. He's yeah. he's um he's he's caught, caught up in the the Hollywood game, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, even the fact at the very beginning when he and Danny DeVito go to bust up the uh, the two smoking pot in their house, he, which by the way, they're just busting into people's homes and taking them off. Like, oh, the yeah, you that's a young Simon Baker. Yeah, 
Yeah, um, that was. It's yeah. the fifties, though. It's the fifties. They did that shit. Sure, and but when he's coming in, he's not even really holding his gun, uh, like firmly. It's just kind of it's dangling off to the side. It's pageantry. It's Hollywood. It's all pageantry. It's Hollywood yes. for for actual police work. Yeah, he he's acting like a movie cop and yeah. not a cop cop. <laughs> um, then you have uh, Guy Pierce, who's Ed Exley. Um, he's the son of a detective who died on the job, mm-hmm. who is seemingly untouchable, and God damn it, he wears glasses. You got to get rid of those. Got to yeah, get rid of those fucking glasses. I can't, think, I can't think of one other man in the bureau who wears them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speaking of, now we have James Cromwell, Captain Dudley Smith, uh, seemingly the beloved captain of this portion of the LAPD. Smith with an S, boyo. Yep. Irish um, cop in L.A., which I love. Yeah. You're right. And Seems James, more like a Chicago cop, right? Yep. Right. Or yeah. Boston, yeah. 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 Hell even. And, uh, and and James Cromwell is just, he's hitting thing. He's hitting balls out the park left and right in this part of the 90s. Um, by the way, funny story. You know, James Cromwell has been to prison multiple times for uh, protesting. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, he just he keeps glued himself. It. He glued himself to a, a table or a bar top because of the price of vegan milk, not vegan milk, something, yeah, something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. he got arrested for that. Uh huh. He's been arrested multiple times. <laughs> um, he uh, then you have uh, generally are kind of narrator at the beginning, the guy who basically tells it like it is in LA. Danny DeVito, who plays Sid Hudgens, he runs a rag mag called Hush. Um, and he basically works constantly with Kevin Spacey. Um, they kind of scratch each other's back. You know, he, Spacey's in, in Vice. So if, if Danny DeVito wants to write a story about young Hollywood uh, people doing uh, cocaine or, or, you know, smoking pot or, as he puts the trip in the light, fantastic, um, or or uh, goofing on the stars, um, he he okay. does something illegal to make the arrest happen. Basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah basically, what he does, he yeah. gets someone to sell drugs to somebody, he gets someone to have sex with somebody, he gets somebody to whatever. And it's all it's all to pay papers, which then some of that goes to Jack Vincennes, yep. yeah, uh, for the tip offs, um, and and basically. You know, and then of course Jack Vincennes is getting his pay, his picture in these magazine in these rag mags that people are buying at supermarkets. And yeah, shit. he's a basically celebrity cop. Right. Yep. Yep. We then have the other side. Now we have those are basically our cops and the people friendly to the cops. We then have um, uh, Strat, uh, Strathern who is playing uh, Patchett. Now yeah, Patchett, Pierce, Patchett, Pierce Morehouse Patchett. Instead of uh, Jesus H. Christ, it's Pierce Morehouse Patrick. <laughs> As is what he says. Anyway, um, he has a ring of prostitutes. And what he does is he hires prostitutes, both male and female, that look like Hollywood stars. And he runs a company called Florida Lee. And what's the, uh, what's the slogan? Whatever you desire. Is yep. that it? Yep. Um, and his uh, one of his top prostitutes is Kim Basinger, who is Lynn Bracken, and she is uh, his Veronica Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, he has another girl who uh, has recently had plastic surgery on her nose, which, of course, Bud White, the you know, when everything when when he's a hammer, everything looks like a nail thinks that she's been beaten up by by Patchett or by um, you know Meeks who's the the former cop who's working as Patchett's bodyguard um, he thinks that uh, he's that they beat him up so you know he's kind of giving them grief at the beginning of this movie as well but all of these characters are basically introduced in the first 10 12 minutes or so which is perfect and each time they're introduced a little typewriter you know, like displays their name and, and, you know, who they are basically. Hush, hush. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, um, 
but yeah, basically, uh, Danny DeVito is just basically saying that Hollywood and Los Angeles is not at all what the postcards show. And that if people really knew what was going on in LA, um, they'd have a completely different opinion. And what's really place. going on, right, is Mickey C. Is it Cohen? Cohen. Cohen. Mickey Cohen. Yep. Cohen. Cohen was the drug mob boss, yep. which you can't have in L.A. And he gets busted, which creates a vacuum in, right. in the city. And a lot of his... Um, how'd they get him? Nothing too original. It is Hollywood, after all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they they get him evasion. on tax evasion. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and his lieutenants start getting knocked off left and right, too. Now, this is part of the, the Bloody Christmas like the real story behind Bloody Christmas, um, Mickey Cohen was um, pretty bad dude. Yeah. Um, in fact, isn't he also portrayed? Isn't uh, he's in uh, Bugsy also? I believe so. Yeah. 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 So he was part of all that stuff, and he just kind of kept moving west. I mean, I think uh, he was. Yeah, he was around during you know Capone days and yeah. all that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he it basically, yeah, the, uh, a power vacuum has begun. So basically, we, we learn that there's drugs all over the place and that somebody is trying to consolidate that power. But uh, we take a little detour because, um, yes, Chuck, you mentioned um, that a lot of uh, booze is purchased in the beginning of this movie. Yes. Um, Bud White and his partner are sent to pick up more booze for the LAPD Christmas party. And I can't think of a bunch of guys that would be the worst people to be fucking sloppy drunk than the LAPD. Uh, but they are. And when he goes there, he's there to pick up multiple bottles of the hard stuff. At least 10. At least 10. He's got to get a whole box. And Lynn Bracken walks in, and he's immediately taken by her. I mean, um, I mean, after all, she looks like Veronica Lake. Right. And she's um, actually Kim Basinger. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, both, both are good options. Um, uh -huh. Anyway, um, so um, he is, um, you know, and that's when he sees Patchett and his bodyguard Meeks and the girl with the... Uh, plastic surgery which he thinks is a broken nose right yeah. and um but anyway he's eventually called off by his partner it's like ah come on let's let's get back to the to the station now one thing i should mention also is that before that uh one of the things that ed actually wants to do is he wants to get the lieutenant as quickly as possible so he is straight and narrow um and he wants to be a detective now Captain Smith has a little bit of a problem with this because unlike somebody like a Bud White, he's not quote unquote direct. He, he won't plant evidence on somebody he knows is guilty. He won't they, beat a confession out of somebody. He won't beat a confession out of somebody. He won't shoot a guy in the back. Dudley's a fight fire with fire guy. Yep. And, and Edward Edmund Exley is not. It's yeah, and it's a problem for him. And he's the and first he's, person to say, "Get get rid of those fucking glasses." Nobody right. in the department wears this. He's yeah, he's not willing to to bend the rules or his principles. Right. Which Smith knows that as a detective, things are going to get dirty. Mm -hmm. And you know, we just talked about this not too long ago with Seven, right? Like it's there. There's a there's a seedy underside that somebody who wants to do all the right things, they're going to be tested. They're going to be tested hard, and this is really a big chunk of this movie is actually being tested on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. they get back to the state, uh, uh, white and his partner get back to the station. Um, actually is, is basically the, the uh, desk sergeant, um, you know, like basically booking people. Yeah. Cause all the pension guys are, have the night drunk. off yeah well, that, or they have the night off because it's christmas eve right um so yeah he's doing yeah he stuff. said he said all the all the cops with families get the night off yeah 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 and, and most of them i think are drinking at the station anyway right. yep <laughs> <laughs> so 
they bring in uh so some cops bring in a group of mexicans that were wanted for beating up cops now exley says kind of offhandedly it's like well those guys those guys are at home they're fine and it's yeah. like no they're they've been they've been beaten within an inch of their, they're on life support or whatever yeah yeah which all the drunk ass lapd guys over here wait those are the guys and they want to take them to the fucking basement and just beat the shit out of them. Yeah, it's like it's like <laughs> it it starts with oh they've just got some scrapes and bruises to to yeah one guy just is on life support and another guy got his eye gouged a guy gouged out like every time one cop tells a story to another one it gets worse and worse for these for these mm-hmm. cops that got beat up right <laughs> and so they they take the the guys down and it's mostly for the for the most part it's Bud's partner and some of the older kind of thug cops stensman stensland stensland stensman yeah um and so at first bud white first of all actually is trying to yell at them from the hallway and, and trying to tell them that you know to, to stop and that it's an order hey or whatever hey yeah guys. and they all laugh <laughs> at him but at first bud white doesn't get involved until one of the Mexicans says, "You fuck your mother," yeah. and he, well, he goes, actually not oh. he doesn't he, try to he's get trying involved. to break it up. He's trying to break yeah. it up. He's right. trying to keep he's, his partner out of it. Right. Yeah. He's he's trying to keep his partner out of it, and he's trying to not like basically he's he's trying to be the 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 calm mm-hmm. until the Mexican says, "Fuck your mom," and he fucks that dude up. Yeah, he's like the he's like the guy who <laughs> stereotypically actually sees red. When he's triggered by something, right. yeah. <laughs> oh, Ben Sands yeah. doesn't get mad until he gets blood on his jacket, on his white, yeah, uh, exactly. white jacket and tie. Yep. So then yep. he gets and the he punches in. a guy. Yep. Yeah. And it's just it's chaos. Yeah. So the commissioner and the DA or the chief, the police chief and the DA, basically in the aftermath, it's like this is going to be a disaster. They're always wor- they are always worried about how they look to the press. You know, this is not the image that we wanted for the LAPD. They say that at least twice. Yeah. And, um, of course, you also have Captain Smith in there. These are his guys. And um, Bud White refuses to testify. He will always stand up for his brothers in arms. So he refuses to testify, so they suspend him immediately. Then in comes Exley. And before they even asked him, it's like, yeah, of course I'll testify. Yeah. But he has an angle. Yeah. It's like, if I do this, I want to be detective lieutenant, which that always cracks me up. When you add detective to the start of lieutenant, it makes me think of Mr. <laughs> Doctor is, or something. You know? It is funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I have the same thoughts on that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, and at first they're like, your dad didn't even make lieutenant until he was 33. You're only 30. And um, Exley is like, well, you know, I also know when he made lieutenant, he was a detective lieutenant. But they're so, and he tells them basically, it's like, go after the guys who are already pension safe. That way, there's no hubbub about them being essentially fired because they're going to get their pension. They're going to be fishing in a week anyway. They're going to be a fish. They're going to be fishing in a week anyway. Um, so they're not going to care. Um, you know, but you may want for you know somebody like Bud White. And his partner Stinsland, you need to make examples. Make an example, of them. right? Throw them in jail. To which Smith immediately says, "Stinsland's worthless, but Bud White is too good. We can't, we can't yeah. do that to him. Too valuable an asset." Yep. Yeah. Um, but they kind of buy that, and they say, "Okay, well, we'll make you, you know, lieutenant." They and they said, you know, to really get Jack Vincennes to talk, take away his show. Take it, take it away so he can't be on the set of Badge of Honor. And they follow his advice, and Vincennes ends up playing ball, too. And he, Vincennes agrees to testify against the pension guys. Right. And X Lee testifies against Stensland. Right. Yep. Yeah, and Captain Smith is like, are you prepared for everyone to hate you? And he's like, I am. Basically, don't give yep. a fuck. Yep. yep. 
because uh, and you know this is when smith starts calling him a political beast he's a political monster he says he's more political he's better at it than i am right i think he's explaining it to some i can't remember who he's explaining bud white it to, but yeah bud white yeah yeah um so yeah so he says um you know so basically they go for it and you know stensland gets fired he is kicked off the the squad he loses his pension, but he doesn't seem all that worried about it. They have a big going away party, which of course everybody looks at actually like he's, you know, like he stinks of shit. And um, even Bud White at first kind of picks up something weird. It's like, well, let's go, let's go out and have a drink or whatever. And, and Stinsland is like, no, nah, I got a date tonight. No, nah, I ain't got no time for that. I got a date tonight. He's like, and maybe we'll meet up later. It's like, oh, okay, I'll make sure bring, bring my wallet just in case. Yeah. yeah, because Thinsland's kind of a loser. Anyway, so he um, they that night actually is kind of working the late shift, and the dispatch calls in looking for somebody in homicide. All the homicide guys fucked with the clock too. That cracked me up. Yeah to make it look later than it is and they all leave <laughs> so they all so leave Exley's there alone <laughs> right so he takes it and we find out that there's been a murder at the night owl cafe yeah. yeah and this is basically the the most important thing that will happen in this whole movie starts now yeah uh, the, that's the brutal build up to it. Brutal it is so um a, a beat cop says he was going to go in but he noticed that there was something wrong so he called in for uh a homicide to get involved and actually is like nobody comes in through the front doors i'm going to go in and check things out he sees that the fry cook is dead from a gunshot wound on the other side of the counter the register is empty and there is a bloody spot on the wall that is dragged to the men's room and when he opens up the men's room there's a pile of dead bodies um so Smith comes in and Smith takes over the, the uh, investigation immediately. He's like, you don't want this kid, uh, but I'll make you my, my second, second in command. command. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, it shortly learned that one of the dead people in the bathroom is Stinsland. Yep. And, uh, when Bud White hears of this, he rushes to the morgue to basically check to see if that's the case. And of course, actually doesn't help his case out much here when he says, no, that's a hell of a way to beat a, a you know, jail time. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, come on. You're smarter yeah. than this. You're, you're basically kicking he's a, like, you're well, kicking like a rabbit it, dog in the face. Yeah. I like <laughs> rubbing his nose in it. Yeah, totally. Two quick things here. Yeah. Um, there was a moment in between here and there where, Bud White actually gets his badge back from Dudley Smith, where Dudley Smith says, yeah. hey, we, we need you, but you're going to have to do some physical work for me in homicide without asking questions. Right. Um, Which, that, when he takes back his gun and like that, he's so excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's very happy. This is all he wants. It's all this man this wants to do, you know, is right. be a cop. Um and alongside of that, I think either right as it's happening or right around that is where Vincennes is making his arrest of the two druggies um, and getting his picture in the paper and blah, 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 blah. Um, it's right around there anyway. Or maybe well, that part's that right earlier. That's right at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, maybe that is right at the beginning. Because he's, he's directing DeVito's guys how to shoot him and get yeah. the fucking lights out of his eyes. Um, I also like that the beat cop is helping the the light the lighting guy like carry his cords and shit yes. that cracked me up um so yeah uh i think it's in the diner when um when, when smith also tells bud white that Exley's a, a political monster and even better at it than he is yeah so um so yeah um one of the other victims is um, a girl. Veronica Lake. No, yeah, sorry, not her. The other one. Yeah, you're right. Um, is it uh, Hayworth? 
Susan Hayworth is who I think they said that she was made to look up like. Yeah. I mean, uh, anyway, the actress is Amber Smith. If you remember her as a as a model, one of the supermodels of the nineties. Oh, um, wow. huh. yeah. So she, um, her mom is her mom. Her voice, the voice of her mom, is it, it, like is almost cartoonish. It's pretty goofy. Because yeah, she's got like such a heavy vo- uh, smoker's voice that it's like. <laughs> anyway so there well, she's asking, used as comic relief kind of even kind in some of, yeah pretty hairy scenes she's kind right. of comic relief yeah um she's, she did she looks familiar i don't i can't remember you know, yeah she's probably been in in stuff um, she's miss yeah. peacock from clue I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> she uh she can barely identify her daughter because of all the plastic surgery. So she says uh, basically that, you know, she has a on basically on her hip, on her hip, like on her left ass cheek, basically. Yeah. And they uncover it. And sure enough, it's her, but Bud white who also comes into the room and sees her realizes that she was one of the, she was the girl in the backseat of Patchett's car who had the plastic surgery. So now he's been kind of given the scent of something. So it's kind of weird, though, because later on when he goes to talk to the coroner and he gets her name, it's like he's learning about it for the first time. You know when, what I'm saying? Right before he goes to interview the, her mom, the mom again. It's weird. It's, I, I was watching that scene later. I'm just waiting. I'm thinking, wait a minute. Well, didn't he already know this information? I don't, think he, I don't think he knew the girl's name. He only knew what she looked like. He came in after... The I mean he only hears that the woman says that's my Susie. I don't think he I don't think he ever heard her called Su- Susan Lef- Still, Lefferts. Still though, isn't the connection to Paget the most important thing? Well, I think he had I, already talked to Paget, and then he goes directly to Lynn. Talk it's, to Lynn. This is later. This is later. Because this is after yes. he talks to the corner. And then, then, then Exley goes in and is like, I wanted to, to tell me exactly what you told Bud White. It's just weird. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll unpack it when we get there. But it, yeah. it, it, it seems like it, he's acting on information that he already had. I felt like I missed something. Yeah, let's, let's get to that point. Cause it oh, no, I, no I, I, know, I know what he's acting on. He, I think he's starting to put pieces together that a former cop was with her and that she was at the same place that his former oh, he partner realizes, was. He realizes she was at the night owl or wait. Yeah. But he knew that because they, on. he was there when her body was identified. Yeah. Hold on. We'll get there. Let's get there. Okay. It's so, a little bit down the road, but yeah. 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 So basically right away, Captain Smith is like, we have information on three young black guys who were shooting um, uh, um, shotguns that fit the uh, what the you know what the crime scene investigation found shells for, and they had a car that was then ID'd around the same time that we expect that these murders took place, which they figured was probably around one a.m. So basically, it's a big manhunt to find these three, partly also, which gets the other cops kind of hot on the case of these, are that because, uh, because Stins was in there, was, was one of the victims. So it's like, you know, basically, we got to go find the, we got to go find the guy who, you know, the guys who did this to one of ours. Um, now... Right away, Exley kind of wants to work with Vincennes, which is Vincennes is only on uh, homicide as part of his <laughs> as part of his uh, uh, punishment for being involved with the uh, with the Christmas night kill or uh, beat up. So yeah. he's not even he's not all that interested. But I think Exley finds something that he thinks is still there in Vincennes. Um, and they start tracking down. Um, they first go to uh, the brother of somebody that Vincennes put away for 
some sort of drug rap, I think. And he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll take 10 years off his sentence. To which Exley's like, yeah, sure. You know, he's already kind of sacrificing a little bit of his, of his morals because he's kind of lying to him, uh, an informant. Kind of. Uh, well, I mean, he's kind of only, I mean, like, Vincennes is giving the promises, but he's kind of lying out of. He's just definitely like, lying. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at least he's not the one. I mean, the only thing that he ever says about 10 years was, you said that was 10 years, right, Jack? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So he is, and they, they get a tip off that this one guy, Sugar Ray, who is kind of, kind of a bad guy so the guy's like i don't even care that i'm telling you this because he's a bad dude and they bust him and um actually decides that he's going to interrogate them himself to which smith is like you better you know there's there's only one thing we want out of this we want confessions and well, it's important, too, that there are other guys there first, and they kind of co-op yeah. the investigation. These guys are looking in the back of the car where the three shotguns are. Right. And it does seem, even at that moment, a little bit odd. Well, we find out more about that later. But, For yeah, sure. it's, but it yeah. definitely seems odd at this moment. Right. And well, this is like, how did you get here? How do yeah. you know? You know, how do you know about that? Well, this is also like they're, they're also approaching the, the house and uh, – Exley's looking for his glasses and uh and Vincent's like, Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And he's like, Oh, I'm looking for my glasses. Like, well then just don't shoot me. <laughs> yep. Which is said in the most Kevin Spaceyest ways that anything has ever been Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Can I pause you for just a moment? It is very yeah. Kevin Spacey. Um the reason Jason later, and I know he said let's deal with them when we get there, but I don't want to forget, is he realizes that the girl was sitting with Stensland, not that they were both there. Hmm. They knew each other. That's what what prompted him to go talk to the mother. Because that, there's yeah. fingerprints or something on the coffee mug. He saw a picture where there's a cup next to his cup, and he's yep. like, someone's sitting with her. How many females were there? One's the right, one's right, the, right, right. One's right. the waitress, and one's her. So she had it's Susan Lefferts, and he's right, like, right. oh, and he start, and then he realizes that that's who he had a date with that night. Right, and he didn't necessarily believe, wouldn't have jumped to that conclusion earlier because he didn't have Stensla those details. didn't react to right. either react. either her or the other ex cop when right. they had to run it outside the liquor store. Yep, yep, yep. yep. This is all, all right, going. This all going to be tied together in a super coo, nice neat coo, bow coo, later. Coo. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So he. Um, yeah. So they 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 bust the guys, and yeah, Smith's like, look. Edmund, we we got to get we we got to get confessions. That's all. That's all there is. Um, and I think it's Vincennes who at first is like, "This kid ain't got it." He's like, "No, let him work." And this is pretty fucking brilliant. Oh, it's awesome because he knows exactly when to pull the trigger into letting the other two guys who are separated. Like all three guys are separated in their own interrogation room. Oh, this, is one, exactly the, this is one when, of the best. This one of the best scenes in the movie. Yeah. Oh, because something else really big happens. Yeah. Um, that is pretty tense, really. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, so he goes in, he talks to Sugar Ray, and he's like, you know, it's like, um, you know, it's like he basically asks him what's going on. You know, what what you know, what did he do uh, with these people? He's gonna go. He's gonna go away. He's gonna go away, and you know, he might. He might have to turn sissy to to protect himself when he gets to the big to the big house. And of course, the guy reacts more, you know, violently towards that than anything. He's like, I ain't no sissy. And then he turns on the speaker so that everybody can hear. It's like, oh no, I heard you say that so and so did this up at the, you know, uh, uh, when he went away for something. And of course, that sets the other guy off because he's now, you know, he, he's he thinks that things are being said about him that are not true, or he's being implicated by, or he's his. being, impl and he could be implicated in the in the murder. Yeah. Well, they they keep going back and forth, to which Exley says that um, 
you know, so I'm talking about the gas chamber and you haven't asked me what this is about. You've got a big guilty sign around your neck. This is actually being kind of, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Naive. He should realize at this moment that these, because it's pretty obvious that these boys don't know what he's talking about. Upset about the night owl thing. No. It's something else. It's something else. And yeah. he, he goes into, an, you know, he goes into another room. He talks to the guy that, you know, that he claimed the other guy said, you know, you know, was, was uh, getting screwed by men. Yeah. Yeah. And it's starting to kind of, that guy says, I only wanted to lose my charity. I didn't expect for it to go farther in so many words. And he's like, what are you talking about? What, what do you, what do you mean by that? And so he starts going to the other room and then he realizes that there's a potential additional victim that is not girl. dead, a girl that is being kept someplace. So, uh, actually pulls another guy and it's like, Hey, I need backup. Let's go. Well, hold on. One of my favorite fucking line lines is here because once Bud White hears there's a girl. Oh, oh my God. He breaks a fucking chair. Yeah. He breaks a chair. He runs in there. He puts the kid up against the wall and he, you know, basically drops five bullets out of his gun. He's like one in six. Where's the girl pulls the trigger twice. Where's the fucking girl. And then he, I mean, it's like super fucking awesome. Right. It's probably Crazy my favorite intense. moment in the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I mean, just him busting the chair with his bare hands yeah. was like, because you could see him like just getting agitated more and more. And you can hear the creaking as he's like gripping the chair more. Well, it's a woman in trouble. And we know yeah. what he, you know, even when there isn't necessarily stuff happening, he still gets kind of aggravated and this time right. he knows there's a woman bleeding who might be alive i'm gonna break this chair and go find out right <laughs> yeah i'm just, I'm gonna break this chair first though hang on a yeah. second um so yeah so uh x uh Exley and and the other guy we'll just call him father that's later for the actually it's actually white that goes in to this apartment to find the girl that's right that yeah. is yes that's right i'm sorry yeah this is after this is the next day Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, White goes. Um, he there's a girl tied, and she kind of motions with his eyes or with her eyes to the next room over. He goes in. He just shoots the guy sitting there watching TV. I think he's watching cartoons, and he just shoots him. And then, before the rest of the cops show up, he puts uh, he puts a gun in his hand. She shoots he shoots, a, shoots the wall, and basically doing the things that. Again, Captain Smith would like Exley to do. And there's just a cool movie thing here, too, because the cartoon that the guy's watching has this kind of heroic music, yeah. cartoony yeah. heroic music playing while he does all this. And it's just a cool movie thing. That right. I yeah. And so basically um, when they so they're, they're basically cleaning up that part and they're getting the girl to the. Um, to the hospital and we find out that the uh that the suspects for the night owl have escaped right they escaped that's not suspect <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yeah it's like who left that window open anyway You're like what that was like right. the, that's like the only convenient thing in this movie it's not convenient it's not Someone convenient let them out. <laughs> no i know i know they did but yeah. like they they opened the window I mean, <laughs> it's another like naivety of the cop. What's convenient about it is that nobody questioned it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But they were all well, in a room with a window that was open. I mean, that's yeah. also goofy. Yeah. I mean, they would have well, been it's in not cells. Goofy. Someone set that up. I understand. But yeah. well, and everybody, but the only is... thing they question is why was the window open? Right. That's the part that's goofy <laughs> is that the other cops don't realize it's fucking yeah. something other than it is. So Sorry. at this point, Exley's like, all right, you. F F Sergeant Fodder, come with me. Yeah, Sergeant Jump, Sergeant something. We're, we're Sergeant we've jump, skipped, Jumpy Finger Fodder, come in. We've with me. skipped something here because um, that we need to get to, and it's it's Russell Crowe, but Bud White. While everybody gets peep their list to look for the the shotgun guys, 
Bud does his own investigation. He goes and talks to Patchett. Right. He goes yes. to Patchett where that's where he finds out that he runs. Um, and he's like, yeah, you saw me right after um, Susan was, was made up to look like. Um, right. Re- she had plastic Hayworth. surgery. Yeah. He's like, that's about all you're going to get from me. Um, but he does um, get the name of. um Kim Basinger's character. Right, Lynn Bracken. And he and, goes to visit her next and, and um Patchett calls her in advance. Yes. Um, this is this is the whole uh councilman, officer. Yeah. <laughs> shitbird. <laughs> LAPD yeah. shitbird. shitbird. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like they're both treating each other like shit. And then the councilman realizes he's a cop, he's a cop. and then yeah. <laughs> like, I, I want me to call your wife to come pick you up. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. So, but this is but this is when they start their relationship in a way. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, not in a way. I mean, it's it's when they start the relationship. Yeah, and she, I mean, because he even like, he's like, "Well, I'd like to see you again." It's like, "Are you asking for a date or are you asking for an appointment?" He's she's like, like, "I don't even I, know your name." Uh, you say, well, a lot. This is a mistake, right? And then he leaves. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because he's like, when she asked him that, he's like, "I don't know, I, I don't know what I'm asking for." But he basically is going there to 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 get confirmation on Patrick's story right yeah. yes um like what's what's the real deal here oh yeah you are actually you know high class hooker made up to look like a celebrity that's what was happening which is funny because we see later that Exley does the same thing goes to lynn's place <laughs> just starts making out with her um which we we find out later that that's plan but it was contrived but um the way he speaks to lynn is kind of villainous in comparison to the way that bud talks to her oh for sure oh for sure yeah yeah bud Bud never calls her a whore no it's the indication get right because that scene is supposed to make you kind of question kim bash bassinger's character entire motive Mm-hmm. Right. But it gives you the clue that she is just doing the job here. And right. just by the way he's treating her, she wouldn't have fallen in. She wouldn't have done anything with him. Right. She was right. told to do this. Right. But with Bud, it's still kind of questionable whether. Right. She right. She's definitely she was, was, was warned at the past that he was coming, probably told what to say. Um, but she's recognizing something in Bud that she likes and that yeah. he sees her for her and not as Veronica Lake. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 So she's prettier. Yeah. She is. Yeah. That's what he says. She's prettier. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah. So basically, um, actually, uh, go, he, he finds out that they're going to go to the drug dealers. He finds out where, uh, the one guy said where they got their, uh, their smack basically. So he goes there and it's a standoff. He just wants to get the three suspects back. But one of the drug dealers drops a bottle, which crashes and old, uh, old quick finger fodder man shoots, which then leads to a shootout. And essentially actually has to kill everybody else. Yeah. One cop gets it. Um, and actually takes out all the all the, the suspects, guys, all the suspects. Which, shotgun, uh, shotgun Ed, right? Which basically, yep. um, pretty much ends the night out case, and everybody in the uh, in the department now loves Exley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Changed his changed his uh, status on a dime. Yeah, right. By basically killing three suspects. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's given a medal medal of valor. And he's a hero. Time goes on. And we see some, um, uh, we, we see some things kind of come and go like, um, the, the Lynn's previous client when, uh, Bud showed up was a councilman, who's, yeah. he, councilman who's being blackmailed into making a change on a vote that seemingly I think deals with interstate expansion. um, Bud and Lynn start going on dates together. They go to the movies. They, you know, they're just kind of hanging out at home and doing 
boyfriend girlfriend stuff at the same time bud is beating up newcomers to los angeles for smith under the guise that they're trying to get rid of a criminal element and not let the vacuum of cohen be filled by these out-of-towners exactly right? and he's starting to think like i don't want to do this anymore he's leaving early from these appointments et yeah all i am is right. a blunt instrument yep yeah yep um and Vincennes has returned to uh, Badge of Honor. So basically, yeah, outside he's back of, on Vice and back on Badge. Yeah, yeah. basically everybody, uh, everybody is back to where they were, with the exception of, you know, of course, Axley is now hero detective, and Bud is a little less violent. Vincennes is in Vice, though he's not right. Well. No. Did they move him back? He yeah. kind of goes back here soon. He goes well, back no, to he, Vice. He goes back to Vice. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, the reason why he gets involved later is uh, scratch your back, scratch mine sort of thing yep. with Axley. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so he um, and, and he's finding out from Hudgens that the district attorney is a little swish, as he puts a it. A little swish. A little swish. And there's an actor who's also a little ACDC, if you get my, if you get my drift. I can't remember. I don't, exactly. think he, I don't think he is. One, he's the guy who was hired or who was at the drug bust at the beginning of the movie. Two, he's just being paid to do this. I, I think, think he, he, I think he's actually one of the Florida lead people. He is. He's one of the Florida. He lead is people. one of the Florida, but he also gets arrested by. Yes. Vincennes well, at the beginning of the movie. Right. right. I mean, yeah, because they say, don't I know you? And Vincent's like, no, yeah. I don't know. And he's like, oh, it must have been, or uh, he goes, it must have been one of those Florida Lee parties. And he's like, yeah, because that keeps recurring. Yeah. It keeps around each individual Vincennes, character sure. and, yeah. and mostly with Vincent's. And so that's a thread he's following that keeps him interested in the whole, in case. the whole thing, in yeah. the whole thing. It's the missing, it's the missing piece for Exley. It's uh, Bud White's too close and Vincent's is haunted by it. Yeah. yeah. So they basically set up this whole thing to where they're going to send, um, this guy to meet with the DA, which will get him um, th that will basically lead to them having a tryst and it's going to be big time hush, you know, exclusive story. Basically Hudgens is going to bring down the fucking district attorney, right? Which Hudgens doesn't give a shit. Now it doesn't really feel like Vincennes is into it. Um, Vincennes starts growing a little bit of a conscience during the course of the whole night owl thing. But now I think he also sees, it's like, you're bringing down one of my bosses, essentially. Like this when he feels bad. bad for the kid. This is the well, second yeah. time we're going to, we're putting you in a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. He feels bad for the for kid. For me to make 50 bucks. <laughs> right, exactly. Like yeah. there is... There are huge, huge implications if they bring down the, the DA, and there's going to be personal implications for this poor kid. Um, but Jack is kind of stuck. He's like, well, the wheels are already turning on this, so I guess I'm going to play along. And he eventually goes to the, to the motel where they're all supposed to meet. 45 minutes early to try to get there before Hudgens. Right. To stop it. Right. Yeah. And he finds the kid with a slit throat. Yep. And he feels bad. I mean, like he feels really bad about this and he tries to get the, the whole thing solved because something's fishy here. Right. Either the DA is dirty or something else is going on here. Right. But as he, you know, as he says to, um, actually later, um, this is skipping ahead a little bit, but he says, basically, I'll help you on the night owl thing uh, because nobody in homicide is going to deal with one of these Hollywood homicides, as you yep. put it, because nobody cares about that. Yep. Um, you know, and, and actually he's like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let, let's, let's solve both of these, which they don't realize is all, com all connected, but we'll get there. You get the well, girl, I get the corner. He, um, Vincent, Vincent says, he's like, I suspect they're, they're, they're even related. Like he, he thinks there's a connection between the two. Yep. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, Vince Sims is starting to become a good cop again. Um, this is there's a really important moment in that scene. Are we there? Well, no, we're not. We're absolutely not because okay. there's there's one big piece that's about to be found by Bud. So, uh, oh, yeah. two things happen simultaneously. One, Bud is still investigating what's going on with Susan Lefferts because something's weird about that. How did his friend get involved with her? Yep. Um, and at the same time, Exley is basically kind of one of those hero moment things where the press is waiting for him. He's walking the captured girl, uh, the Mexican girl that was being held by the, uh, by the suspects earlier, to her car basically he's he's walking her out of the hospital for a photo op uh, yeah it's all this because the the, photo op yeah yeah. the whole thing is there you know is all set up for the for the uh press but he's talking to her a little bit about it and she basically says i don't even know if i told anything that that helped you solve anything basically she's like i just wanted those basically she just wanted the fuckers to pay she because they the raped her what they wanted to hear because so they could get justice you know, right the, because nobody was going to care if they raped a mexican girl unless they unless they also shot white people yeah. right so she put the connection together for the cops um and she's like i don't even know you know like i don't even remember exactly what i told you, I don't know if I'm even telling the truth, basically. Right. And Exley immediately realizes something's fishy because yeah. he is, at the end of the day, a good cop. Um, even if he's got questionable morals, he can cop real good. And he, he realizes hard. he cops hard. Uh, he realizes this is all fishy. Meanwhile, Bud goes to Susan Lefford's. Uh, mom's house and basically for two reasons just to say yeah one he realizes that there was a cup at the table and he remembered that susan leffert's mom earlier in the movie said i did not like her boyfriend yeah right she was not right for my susie so he made that connection like oh maybe he maybe Stens- stenslin was the boyfriend right and, <laughs> and that's, that's what why he goes there yeah and so he goes there and he basically gets a positive id that Stenslin was her boyfriend yep and you know it's like there was always and there was always a third person around and so he's like huh okay and he's looking at it's like there was commotion out on the front lawn one day with another person it's like huh this is all weird also, you have a weird room over here that is, you know, that you've got a, a towel placed up against the bottom. What's in here? It's like, oh, it's just some old things. Don't go in there. I want you to leave. He goes in and he stinks real bad. And she's like, oh, don't worry about the smell. I think a rat died under the, the, wall the, or the in the walls or something. And so he goes basically into the um, into the crawl space and finds a badly decomposed body and the id on him it's meeks i like the the symmetry here too because it's the second time he's pulled this wallet you recognize the wallet right away like it's it's a cool little scene in the like kind of a replay of the earlier scene yeah and um he comes out of there it's like well what'd you find he's like yeah you're right just rats a real big one a real big one (laughs) Uh, and he takes the money out of his wallet and is like, here you go. This compliments of the LAPD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, why is she acting all cagey? Is she just embarrassed by the smell or, or what? I she think she's just, a, well, she's just a weird old lady, too, I think. <laughs> no, I, I think, I mean. She's being harassed, I think, by multiple people. Yeah. Before Bud White gets there. Like, she's been harassed by Meek. She's been harassed by Stenslin. She's, yeah. she's going to get harassed again by... Actually, actually here soon yeah. just v- moments later <laughs> yeah. yeah she just wants to have her fucking smoke outside anyway <laughs> yeah. um yeah so um yeah and he's um and also bud has also been talking to lynn about how something isn't right something something just and she's and he's like i'm just not smart enough to put everything together and she's like no i think you are I think you are smart enough to put this together. 
Right. And it was right after that that he realized I should just go to, you know, to to the girl's home, Susan's yeah. home, and that and then that all just kind of lands in his lap at that point. He he did the one thing he needed to do, and his kind of <laughs> bulldogishness about it went to the you know went to the crawl space and found Meeks. Um, meanwhile. Uh, Exley and uh, and Vincennes are kind of you know he's he's having uh, Vincennes follow Bud, and that's when he finds out about Lynn. Um, you know, finds he, out he went to Campanato, whatever his name is, Stampanato. Stampanato. Um, yeah. Oh, and this was he does this after he goes to. Um, he also goes to the Once Leopard's home. Once he finds home. out Meeks is dead, he goes, yeah. So. Well, he doesn't know it's Meeks yet. He finds that out later. No, no, yeah. I'm talking about Bud White. No, Bud but, White. but but Exley has now also shown up. Yes. Yeah. So, I would say and Bud he, White goes to Stampanato after he yes. found out about Meeks. Yes. And so, and that's when he finds out that Meeks was probably killed for heroin. That there was a big drug deal and that, um, you know, that, that, he was probably bumped off because of a disagreement. So he, um, right. And Exley has now also shown up at the Lefferts home and finds the dead body, pulls it out and, and does the, the extra thing that Bud should have done, which was reported, but Bud's kind of working under, uh, I think, again, this is maybe Exley doing the right thing, but it's still his naivete is showing yeah. because it's like, well, I've got to call this in. Bud knows that there's something. It's not just the body that stinks. Right, right. Everything stinks. Yep. Um, and he'd rather he'd rather be able to operate without that body being being a known asset, if you will, known evidence, um, as long as he can. Yeah. Well, yeah. Previously, when before he went and saw Lynn, which he is found pretty damn that, smart, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before he went and saw Lynn the first time. Patchett had already said that Meeks no longer is employed by him too. Right. Yeah. So he's already, you know, now he also has that to think about too. Mm -hmm. So he, um, <laughs> so uh, Exley and, and Vincennes decides that they also want to go see Stompanato. <laughs> this fucking kills This me. scene is awesome. And so he, they come busting into that, that uh, same bar that, uh, that, um, Bud saw Stampanato and says, um, basically, he's sitting there with somebody that <laughs> looks like Lana Turner, right? And he's like, uh, yeah, uh, a two bit whore cut to look like Lana Turner is still a two bit whore. To which Vincent is kind of knowingly smiling, he's like, That is Lana Turner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, What? He's like, That is Lana Turner. <laughs> and he gets, a, he gets a drink thrown in his face, and they get back out to the car. And actually, just laughs at it. It's like, you know, how was I chuckle. supposed to know? Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. how am I supposed to know? <laughs> there is one other important thing as we progress here. Um, Pollo Tomato. Oh yeah, Rolo Tomasi. So yes, Rolo why, Tomasi. Uh, why are you still? What made you a cop? Yeah, and and basically, actually, is like, you know, my dad was killed by a, a purse snatcher. He was just trying to stop him, and he got um, knifed in the gut, basically. They never knew who it was, so it was the guy who got away with it, and he named him, as part of his grief, Rolo Tomasi. And Rolo Tomasi will always uh, represent the guy who will get away with, it, with yeah. the crime. Yep, and that kind of touched Vincennes, too. And he asked Vincennes, he's like, well, what made you a guy? He's like, um, I don't remember. Yeah. But then it's like when he when he talks to him about doing the um, the whole thing, um, and that he agrees to help with Vincent's case uh, that was going to start as vice, but is now a homicide. Like Vincent's comes alive. He's like, "All right, now this is what we're going to do. We got to go do this, and we got to do this." And and it's like now they are on equal footing at this point, and they're yep. you know th at this point they're going to solve this. Yep, and I had to mention, because I don't remember us mentioning Royal 
Tomasi because it's very important. Yeah. It is <laughs> extremely important that reveals the whole damn thing. And there's still 40 minutes left in the movie, which yep. is fantastic. Yep. Um, because that just adds tension. So Vincennes, um, so actually goes to, uh, uh, you know, thinks that Lynn is sleeping with Bud because Patchett wants her to do so for something. He thinks Patchett is kind of worming his way into, you know, getting things from higher ups. And so, um, <laughs> she's like, no, well, maybe, maybe I just like hanging out with Bud because he makes me feel good about who I am. And he doesn't think I look like Lana Turner. And, um, he's not exactly buying it, but she's able to hold her own so well that he just basically starts making out with her. And they fuck, and little Danny DeVito's in the bushes. <laughs> Think about that next time you fuck, listeners. That Danny, little Danny DeVito De- might be in the bushes. He might be in the bushes with the camera. With the old-timey camera. <laughs> <laughs> Those flashbulbs probably got to give him away a lot, though, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe he was using a different kind of camera that had the, a different shutter. Yeah, I'm deal. sure he had night sight. On yeah. That one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, it was pretty bright inside. I mean, Lynn, yeah. Lynn keeps things bright, you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah. So basically, um, Hudgens is in on pretty much everything. And the next time we see it, uh, well, Vincent decides to go to see Captain Smith to talk about Buzz Meeks, the old cop who was Patchett's uh you know, guy, uh, bodyguard that is now dead. And, you know, he's, he realized that Meeks and uh, Stinslin were signing off on a lot of stuff that seemed a little fishy. And they all, their CO was basically Captain Smith at the time. And, you know, he wants to try to figure out about this. And he's like, hey, um, you know, what do, what do you remember of these guys? It's like, oh, they were shit. You know, they were terrible cops. They couldn't pass a physical. They were, you know, they were all just bad at their jobs or whatever. And Vincent starts talking about how they basically um, wrote, you know, basically was, was signing off on all these really important cases. And Smith asks Vincent, well, who else knows about what you found? He's like, well, nobody which, of course, gets him shot. Or what does Exley know, more importantly? Right. Yeah. Because it's and, the reason he utters his last words. Right. And so what's he know? And he says, Rolo Tomasi. And so um, after, so they, you know. Actually, he, it's kind of funny. He, 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 he asks, what does Exley know? Says nothing. He says nothing. And then he gets shot. And then, then Captain Smith says, any valediction or something like that like last words basically and that's when he says rollo tomasi yeah right yeah. Yeah. and so he uh, so the next day he tells the the station that's like jack Vincennes was found dead you know we're gonna um he was probably killed someplace and moved no shit um <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and it's basically the same speech he gave earlier for the night out we want two man teams to go blah 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 blah. right and he pulls actually aside and he's like what do you know about rollo tomasi and actually knows exactly what that means yeah you know so now he's he's like he's taken aback but he keeps his cool yeah right it's a brilliant move by vincennes to say that last because he knows that Smith is going to ask him about it. <laughs> yeah, right. And he has no way, no reason to know it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and the way he brings it up is totally wrong. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So at this point, uh, we see that Smith has uh, Hudgens basically worked over for info about the, the Patchett girls. And it's all a setup. All that is for is for him to talk, to say, that Patchett had him take pictures of one of his girls with a cop for basically for blackmail reasons. And her name was 
Lynn something. She's uh, she looks like Veronica Lake. Yeah. To which, uh, Bud g- gets fucking pissed. Yeah. He goes out. He gets in the back of Hudgens' car, where Hudgens says, "Yeah, I got a whole trunk load of stuff," and he starts going through it, and he flips the fuck out, and he goes straight to Lynn, and he basically beats her up a little bit. Yep. Um. Gives her two black eyes. Yeah, he does. Uh, he, he hits her pretty hard. I mean, he goes against everything he stands for. Yeah, really. In that moment, it's and, and yeah, that moment, sad. he it's becomes really his sad. father. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And he's kind of you know realizing what he's done when she's cowering from him. He just he gets out of there. It's, he's he's stunned. He's but then <laughs> he goes looking for Exley. Now, when he first leaves for Lynn's place. Um, the other guy asks Captain Smith, what's that all about? He's like, well, right now, um, what was it? Something like, I wouldn't want to be, uh, basically said, I'd hate to be Edmund Exley right now. now, Yeah. yeah. I'd hate to be Edmund Exley. Uh, I wouldn't be Edmund Exley for all the Irish whiskey or something like that. Something like that. All the whiskey in Ireland. Yeah. It's it's the fucking Irish thing. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Um, but you know, Exley and Bud, you know, like Bud comes storming in and starts beating the shit out of Exley. Um, and he reveals to Bud that no, Smith killed Vincennes and now he wants you to kill me. This is all a setup. To which point, uh, Bud throws a chair out the window, just right the fuck out the window. It was a good aim because <laughs> <laughs> that window doesn't break. <laughs> He's a monster. Yeah. He's and so, um, and he's like, you know, uh, something's, you know, there's, this is all connected in some way. And Bud's like, I think, I think Stensland killed Meeks over heroin. And then actually thinks that Smith pinned it on the black kids because they had records. It was easy peasy. You know, it was like, just go ahead and pin it on somebody who already has a record, who already, we already know, did another thing. So, you know, it's like, that's just easy to help connect all the dots. So, Exley and Bud decide they're going to go to the, speak to the DA to basically find out what's going on between Smith and Patchett. But um, the DA is not going to tell him anything. So, Bud gives him a swirly. <laughs> <laughs> he sticks his head right in the fucking toilet i love it because like, oh you can't play good cop bad cop with me i invented it right and so so bud sticks his head in the toilet then hangs him out the window <laughs> <laughs> and then Exley's like is that how you did good cop, bad cop? <laughs> <laughs> so good guy pierce plays Exley so cool and he's such a perfect mix with Russell Crowe. Like, they're literally good cop, bad cop in, in every scene that they're together. And they're even compared as much. You know, it's like uh, Smith is like, you're too, you know, it's like, I need a guy who's going to go one step beyond. And that's what, you know, that's, that's what Bud does. It's like you, you know, you're too straight with this. And even when he's teamed up with Kevin Spacey, they're both smarmy and in, in different ways. That is just perfect. But um, so, yeah, they basically find out that Smith and Patchett were going to take over Mickey Cohen's empire. And they decide then to go to Patchett and they find him dead with slit wrists, but two of his fingers are broken. His bowling fingers yep, have, his bowling have been fingers have been broken. <laughs> yeah. So there's obviously um wasn't his doing. Somebody forced, you know, basically beat him up or forced him into doing it. Yeah. Um they next go, you know, they realize at that point Lynn's in trouble. So they have the Hollywood cops go and check in on her, but they've already moved her to the station. Exley goes to talk with her. They've both been beat up by, by Bud. They've got that in common, I guess. Um, I have that note, too. Both, both yeah, characters right. beat up by Bud. And Bud sends Exley there 
because he can't face he, her. he won't face her and he mm-hmm. says to her um you know bud hates that he you know for what he did to you and she's like yeah now now i know how he feels yeah um which is you know that's pretty on it's, on the spot yeah we're on the nose cool of exley too because it's not like bud told him to say that right? not that like, we had a the moment scene. of like compassion yeah that exley shows yep yeah um and exley um or bud is going to go talk to hudgens while exley's talking to flynn but hudgens has been beaten to death which we pretty much guessed was going to happen the moment that captain smith put on black gloves <laughs> basically, basically everyone in la is dead besides like the yeah. characters. well the bad cops and the good cops they're the only ones left yeah la's a ghost town yep um now bud gets called to the victory motel supposedly by exley but when he gets there they find out that they supposedly each called each other there yeah so they're being that's a classic uh, move yeah they're basically being um well they're like fish in a barrel at this point yeah they're they, the pulling car, up all around pulling them. in from all angles they're all yep. around them yep and so, bud knew bud realized this was a trap yeah, yeah bud bud figures to, yeah and yeah. he's he's got to go get his uh his pump action rifle um and he's gonna fuck some dudes up in close I range mean, <laughs> really like this scene though where they're just standing there and you know in a lot of movies you'll see like the front end of the car pull up and it's all like aggressive and stuff but in this one it's almost like an alien encounter just the lights keep showing up in the trees from different directions it's a cool approach to that like you're surrounded kind of thing i don't know it's it's very noir it it is like that the the lights and shadows you know yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I, don't I, watch, mean, I guess I don't watch enough noir films. I've seen a few, but yeah, it's uh, very cool. Very cool. I mean, this is why Dante Spinotti was nominated for Best Cinematography. <laughs> um, by the way, this is also a score from uh, Jerry Goldsmith. Good, yeah. good work on this. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, um, this is uh, pretty much a, 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 a pretty awesome shootout at this point. Um, I think it's safe to assume that not everybody here is a cop. Some of these people may just be former cops or gangsters. Some of them are on the take. You know, I mean, I think this is this is just Smith's muscle at this. I got point. the feeling most are not cops on it. That's the right. way I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I would figure as much too because I'm not entirely sure Bud or or Exley would want to shoot them. As as and I don't think all as freely cops, as they do, <laughs> I don't think all cops would agree to shoot them either. Exactly. I think I think I think there are some things that Captain Smith has sanctioned for, like the stuff that Bud does to beat information out of people, and I think he has his hands in other things, which are, you know, just goons. They're just goons. Sorry, he has to have people that are not the law to run the right. drug part of the business. Right, exactly. That's not going to be the cops running that. Right, yeah. exactly. So anyway, the um, yeah. So basically, they. I mean, they both take hits. Um, you know, they they but they pretty much uh, defend the one room in the in the uh, victory which you know uh, bud is even smart by noticing it's like he's like i'm gonna go into the crawl space and i'm gonna shoot guys from up the hole basically um and he also takes out some people's legs outside yeah he shoots them in the legs so that uh actually can get them from the window yep it's pretty cool and uh you know there's there's one point in which uh actually is is cornered and he pops up out of the hole and if I can blow some dudes away. Um, but the last guy standing is Captain Smith. And he pretty much shoots uh, Bud, like, right in the neck or something. Right, right? in the face. Right in the, right, right in the right, face. Right in the cheek. Yeah. 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 And, um, and basically, he's like, uh, so are you going to shoot me or are you going to arrest me? And he's like, if you don't do anything... I'll make you like super detective or whatever <laughs> of all the detectives. 
primary minister of detectives. Yeah, like the lieutenant. like the chief big cock or chief whatever. Boyo. Uh, chief yeah, Boyo. Chief you'll Boyo. Be, you'll be Chief That's Boyo. Be chief someday. Boyo. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Boyo R D. Uh, I was gonna I was gonna do that too. Good one. Like Which is really cool because you have the character who would immediately shoot Smith is incapacitated. Right. right? Like yeah. this is like Bud's personality through and through. He would have shot the guy's fucking head off right away. Right. We have the character who we've kind of been questioning is because my first note about him was he's the moral compass. And then my next note about him is, is Oh, he just wants to get ahead. Right. Right. And this is like critical. Like they give you this information in the first 12 minutes, like you said, or whatever. And it's the most critical movement of the movie besides Poyo Tomato guy. Sorry. <laughs> trying to make that joke work. Boyo to make well, well, work. It's, yeah. well, it's interesting because, you know, the, the three things that he wouldn't do were plant evidence, beat a confession, um, or shoot a man in the back, right? Yeah, who I don't know that he ever actually planted evidence, but he sat by while um, while Bud beat a confession out of the out of the DA, right? That's true. And what's he yeah. do next? He, he shoots, shoots the man in the back. Right. So Captain Smith is like, "Hey, pull your badge out because you know they they won't shoot you if they see the badge." And the cops are still far enough down the down the way. So actually makes his move. He shoots him. Yep. Shoots them dead right in the back. Yep. But politics still kind of win. Yes. Oh, because, yeah. for sure. Because, again, the chief of police, um, Chief Chief Boyo RD. <laughs> uh, um, chief Boyo DA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's Spaghetti A. <laughs> spaghetti A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chief Boyo RD and oh, Chef. And, and, and Spaghetti A. Spaghetti A is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to spin this right they're like they're looking for the, the the soft so that the that the citizens don't eat them alive and that the outside press doesn't eat them alive right and you know and and basically actually lays out very succinctly this is what happened this is what i know and this is what i suspected would happen and the guy you know the <laughs> chief boy rd and uh and and spaghetti a are like oh god this is a nightmare what are we gonna do and <laughs> i think i'm i think i'm dying okay <laughs> so then it, it the, took us a lot longer to get to this point in this episode than normal right <laughs> Yeah, we got, there. <laughs> we got there finally. It all had to come together. Um, and so the, you know, and basically they see actually smiling and kind of chuckling to himself. It's like, what's so fucking funny? And he's like, well, you're sitting there trying to figure out how to make Captain Smith a, a hero to cover all this up. You're going to need two heroes. Multiple. multiple you're going to need multiple heroes. Yeah. And uh, it's like, well, what, what do you got in mind, basically? And you see he gets another medal. <laughs> and 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 uh chief boy boy or d are like oh yeah it's like you fucking turd you know like he he's he's had enough of that shit um and he you know he basically becomes the hero again and he sees uh lynn come in to kind of say goodbye to him and he tells her it's like yeah they're using me but i'm using them for a little while too yep and uh she basically takes him outside to where Bud's in the back seat. Oh, he's alive. He's alive. Bud's alive. I mean, do you think, a, I mean, this is prime, prime Russell Crowe. Do you think he's going to be taken down by a fucking bullet to the face? No. I, I don't I, know. No, no sir. He's going to be eating pudding for a while, though. I'll tell you Probably. that. Probably. Yeah. I forgot he lived through this movie. It's been that long since I've seen it, and I was kind of surprised. Yeah. Like, he deserved a hero's <clears throat> death. Like him being alive to me feels a little cheap. Well, like, like maybe. The well, they had cheap. already killed Kevin Spacey. That's yeah. true, and that was the big shocking death, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and she. They she gotta sums give it you. Up. They gotta give you a little bit of. I'm you know, glad he cause, lived. Cause, yeah, because nobody, nobody really liked Ed Exley, right? Right. 
No. <laughs> That's well, a good point. <laughs> right. Well, but she, she, she sums it up nicely. She's like, well, you got the medal. The other hero got the, got the girl. And a and trip to Arizona. Like, yeah. And, and a, yeah. 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 Got a, got a former hooker and a trip to Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that Exley hooked him up in some respect in that whole, you need multiple heroes. Oh, I'm probably. Sure. I'm, I'm sure. sure. I'm sure he got some good. I got early pension and disability Probably. and all yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, so yeah. And so they head off to, uh, to go to Arizona where she is from and, uh, actually is, uh, probably someday going to be the next captain Smith. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it is kind of left that way in a way that he is, semi-coercible right he's, like, he, well but he is conniving too so yeah. he may be you know he and may do the right things whereas captain smith was doing the wrong things yeah and, and, but he's already compromised his integrity his straight-edged integrity yeah yeah at multiple times yep yeah yep. you're right like at every like in order to solve the case and win yep. he needed to break all of his code Yep. Um, like, yeah. yeah. So the incorruptible had to be corrupted to take down a bigger corruption. Yep. Yep. That's this more is, for you. This <laughs> is a really, really, really good movie. And for a long movie, it goes by really fast. Yeah. The script is tight. Like, Very. they don't miss a, many beats, if any, in this movie. Right. Yeah. No, they really didn't. Um, it's a um it, it's it's well constructed in the same way as um well I mean, it's very similar to chinatown i knew you were going to bring up chinatown i knew it i just yeah, knew forget it. forget about chuck it's chinatown <laughs> <laughs> um no but i mean it's Again, Jerry Goldsmith did music for both, you know, and they sound and, and look a lot alike, um, different eras, one's right. pre-war, one's, you know, 50s. But, um, but no, they're, they're constructed very similarly to where everybody's got a little bit of dirt on them. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's realistic. Yeah. I mean, that's the way politics are, and we will continue to rant and rave about politics forever, but... Almost every politician has to be dirty to get to where they are, at least in some respect. I wish that you could be the golden boy, right, and be impenetrable and rise to the top, but it doesn't seem like that's the way. No, um, I mean, yeah. it, it's, 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 it's not even being cynical to think that way anymore. It's, no. it, it's you're naive if you don't, which is right. really sad. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, again, this was, you know, a movie that oddly enough being a noir movie had a, um, <laughs> had a little bit more, um, of a happier ending than the movie that won best picture. Ha. Huh. Yeah. It didn't. You know, um, yeah. But that old lady got her necklace back. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess um aye, aye, aye. <laughs> but she threw it away though also yeah i mean she she chucked that shit right into the you know right into the drink she must not have she must have been protesting the Vietnam i guess War. i don't remember Aren't as she? good as it gets as well as you guys what chuck i said i guess i don't remember as good as it gets as well as you guys I was joking. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I hear you. Um, though that will definitely um, that had a happy ending, and Full Monty had probably one of the most joyous endings. Had a happy ending, if you will. Well, they they went. They went the, <laughs> I will. <laughs> they went the Full Monty. They went the know. Full Monty. Yeah. Um, Drop trowel. I Boom. believe in Credits. miracles. <laughs> <laughs> um so just a uh we've talked about this before the uh i mentioned back when we talked about um oh shit i don't remember um 
what is it oh, we talked what, about? Maybe we'll remember. Yeah, what's the... Um, oh, shit. Why can't I think of the title of the uh, Wachowski movie that we talked about with uh, Jennifer Tilly and... Bound? Bound. Bound. Yeah, so, Jesus Christ. I, I knew it was B.O. something, and I was like, I couldn't remember the rest of it. Anyway, um, we talked about the 2020 awards, the organization that goes back 20 years and... Oh yeah, Re- yeah. recast, reevaluates, the, right? Yeah, reevaluates yeah, 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 yeah. So um, it did not fare any better in Best Picture, hmm. but it did not lose the Titanic. Instead, it lost the Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, uh, surprised. with Paul Thomas Anderson also taking Best Director. However, uh, in Best Actor, Boogie Nights is is aged like a fine wine. It's awesome. Yep. Um, for Best Actor, they did add Guy Pearce and Russell Crowe. Okay. Um, it still won Adapted Screenplay. Good. Uh, but this time it got Cinematography. Oh. oh. Um, won Cinematography. Let's see. That Originally? was very likely Titanic. Oh, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was 11 of them. I assumed one of them had to be um, for that. Uh, but Original Screenplay also went to Boogie Nights. Interesting. Yeah. I yeah, joke I, Stephanie all the time that because we went and saw Boogie Nights when we were friends, you know, forty years ago, however long ago that was. Um, how 40, long? 40, 40 years. I was ago. joking. It's not that long, <laughs> but it feels like a lifetime ago. Right? Twenty-five because years. I moved ago. to California 25. in between and everything. Twenty-five years. But I always say that's our first date, and she shits on me every time. It's kind of funny because <laughs> it was. She, she well, just, well, two she literally that shits year. on you. Two yeah. two critically acclaimed movies that year ended with um, full Mark frontal Wahlberg's nudity, oh. male full frontal nudity. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it is a good point. Um, they took out the full money in Best Picture and Titanic. Oh wow! So the Boogie Nights could be in there and win. But the one they replaced it with, I find interesting because I didn't think it was that well liked. The Edge. Oh. With That's a, a good movie. Baldwin um, and, and but is it that well liked? I don't know. Um, it's a very good <laughs> movie. Know. That was a good. That was a good year for David Mamet because he also um, was nominated for Wag the Dog that year. I like. And it. he wrote The Edge. Um, they also took um, Kim Basinger out of Best Supporting Actress. Huh. Yeah. Um, the nominees were Julianne Moore, Janine Garofalo. For Romeo and Michelle's high school reunion. Oh, interesting. Uh, Sigourney Weaver for the ice storm. Cameron oh, Diaz good... for uh, my best friend's wedding. And then they huh. kept. So basically, Julianne Moore and Joan, Joan Cusack were the only two that remained. So the the ice storm was that year. Wow. Yeah. Damn, that's a good movie. Yep. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Good movie, anyway, dude. yeah, this it? is a good movie regardless. I still think it's the best film of 1997, though, to be honest with you, if you'd asked me 25 years ago, I would have said, yeah, I mean, Titanic is going to win Best Picture. Yeah, yeah. Um, It's just, it's a type of movie that gets voted for Best Picture. This is the type of movie that's always expected to be the bridesmaid. Man, we, what, what, say what, what we want about insane Titanic. year for Hollywood at the box office. Like, think about all those movies that were critically acclaimed in the money they made. And then think about movies like The Fifth Element, Face Off, Men in Black. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, they're just printing money. Yeah, that was a big summer. Yeah. Didn't Godzilla come out in 97 or was that 98? 98. 98, 98. Yeah. That was a shit bag. Don't ever, don't ever mention that movie again, Chuck. I mean, my best friend's waiting. I made a, made a buttload of money. Chuck looks seriously upset about that. Um, just so refer guys, to it as Zilla. That's Zilla. It. <laughs> it's the That's... one. It's the one with the Puffy Zeppelin song. <laughs> just... God, it's so bad. Yeah, it's so, it's so freaking bad. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, you were gonna say Chuck about Titanic. Oh, as much as it's not my kind of movie, it's not like it's a bad movie. No. Like. We can we can say it doesn't deserve it, and I liked all four movies in the category more than it, but it probably deserved to be up there for best yeah. picture, right? Oh, it's sure. Not a, I mean, yeah, it's it's a it's a box office smash that got good reviews. Of course, it's going to be there. 
and I had to, like I love Kate Winslet. I love Leo DiCaprio. Like I love, I think they're good actors and actresses. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what, but but it ain't, but it ain't this movie. No, nope. it's not. Agreed. So, anyway, um, yeah. So I think I think this is. I think that's I think that's it. I think is we're, this I think we're good. well for a little bit, Chuck. A little bit. Do you, would you like me to explain what's going yeah, on? Yeah, please here? explain why this is goodbye for a little bit. Yeah. So after 225 episodes, <laughs> guys, we need a fucking vacation. And yep. I'm not. And I'm not turning this into, oh, we're going to go on a truckcation, like I did last. <laughs> we're, not going, <laughs> we're not, not going, going to Italy. We're not going to Italy. Not hiding any luggage this time. Uh, uh, we're not going to Australia yet. You know, these are all things that um, we will do, but we're going to take a very real vacation. Um, you know we're gonna we're gonna take at least a couple of months off, but don't worry, we'll be back. Um, you know we're gonna we're gonna figure out. You know not only will we be back, but will it be on a weekly basis? Will it be biweekly? Will it be combination of both? Whatever it is, uh, we have. Uh, we are not done. It's not like we're out of fucking movies. If you could see me on Zoom right now, you'd see me pointing at this big fucking uh, thing of movies. Some of which my other two esteemed uh, colleagues probably would never want to talk about, <laughs> but that's why I have another website. Um, so, anyway, we are going to take a vacation. We'll be back in in a little while, but um, this gives us a chance to you know take a look, take stock. You know, we've done this for over you know, like I said, two hundred and twenty five episodes now. Um, you know, it's time to to evaluate and take a little bit of a breather. But we will be back probably August or September, some, somewhere around there. But if you really want to know when we're coming back, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, that's when you're going to find out when episodes drop. Anyway, you'll also be notified if you uh, subscribe on one of the many platforms that we post our episodes on. Um, and what's more is that um, during... Um, during this whole time, Monster Mondays is still going to go on. So, you know, I mean, you're still going to get something from somebody at Film Seizure. Um, you know, just the just the dumb one of the three of us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I still like talking about monsters. So I'm going to do that. Do it. I'm going to. Do it. I'm fucking going <laughs> to. Uh, speaking of, you want to know what's coming up on the next Monster Mondays? Yeah. This upcoming Monday, May 30, that's Memorial Day. I'm going to talk about Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter. That's a kind of a badass swashbuckling vampire horror flick from Hammer. And um, yeah, it's got uh, Caroline Monroe in it. She is always welcome in, in a movie in the 70s. So yeah, there you go. Um, that is this Monday. Uh, Following up from that, I've got some Japanese movies in June, and I've got some TV stuff in July. So, you know, there's, there's still a lot of Monster Mondays to talk about. Another trip to, to uh, Japan, like I said, for next month. Another trip to the Doctor Who and to, and to the, to the Kolchak Night Stalker stuff. So, yeah, more Monster Mondays coming. But for Film Seizure, we are going to uh, take that little bit of a break, and we will be returning uh, either late summer or early fall with renewed yeah. vigor. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm never going to talk about vigor again. I'm, that's, that's unsavory. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's very unsavory. But uh, this upcoming Friday at my website, bmovieanima.com, I am going to be writing about Blood Street. That's a great Leo Fong, uh, uh, Cameron Mitchell uh, joint there. Um, a, lot, a lot of dumb shit happens in that movie, and it's fun. This upcoming Friday, or Saturday, rather, on B-Movie Enema, the series, William Shatner is in the house, baby. <laughs> as is Mr. Jason Oliver as a guest star. What? And, the, uh, and he plays an asshole. Wait till um, you see this man's acting chops. <laughs> oh boy. 
<laughs> Wait until you, you see my directing if you, chops. If you could pinpoint my accent, you win. No, it's Mid-Atlantic. It's, it's Mid-Atlantic. I, I, I'm, convinced this, I'm convinced you're from Maryland, probably somewhere around Baltimore. I know. I should, I should, have, uh, I should have done the ooze and all my, yeah. Yeah. Sue, anyway. Sue. Um, yeah, but Incubus is the uh, feature. Um, hope you don't mind reading subtitles because um, it's it's an Esperanto. Unless you speak Esperanto. Oh, you could. It's yeah. very possible. It's very, there are some people in Esperanto. <laughs> There's something like 90 million people who speak Esperanto. Yeah. That's not insignificant. No. Anyway, it is not. No. So, anyway, these are the things that will happen. We will be back, like I said, later this summer, early fall. But until then. I'm going to take a break. I don't know about the two of you, but I'm going to go and actually I'm not taking a break. I'm doing Monster Mondays. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, I'm Jeff Arbuckle. I'm Pollo Tomato. <laughs> uh, I'm Jason Oliver Boyos, and you've been listening to Film Seizure. Yeah.